real life, nigga. Nigga straight street shit. Yeah, it's a rugged ass hey, home. I told you niggas fed up. I thought you got the boys. Y'all yeah. 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 yeah, want gangsta rap. Oh, we finna show y'all motherfuckers yeah. gangsta rap. I was in a cell um basically 24 hours a day, mm. um, except you know, the hour that you get out for either to make a phone call or take a shower. You have to choose. You don't get both. Why is, why is it like guaranteed that we're getting live? Yeah. Because it's the game talking. And this is not a shot at him, but he's very extra. Like he puts, he lie. Everybody know he lie. <laughs> the game may have once been one of the top rappers in the industry, but nowadays he's often seen as a case of wasted potential. Still, there are a few things about the game that some people might not know, like his rough upbringing, multiple stints in prison, and how he's often labeled as one of the biggest liars in the music industry. Let's dive into it. First off, the game was exposed to violence from an early age. His parents were Crips, so growing up in a rough neighborhood wasn't a shock for him. Guns could go off in the street and he wouldn't even flinch. He was used to it. Now, your parents, weren't they both Crips? Yeah. So the violence, the violence was there, but you were just accustomed to it because it was what it was. I, I can remember watching, uh, you know, being in the house watching A Team or watching cartoons and hearing gunshots ring out and not even flinch. But things got worse at home when his parents' relationship took a violent turn. When the game was in third or fourth grade, social workers stepped in after some domestic violence issues and deemed his home environment too unsafe for children. Now, you ended up in foster care at one point? Yeah, I ended up in foster care because, you know, my parents got into, you know, a few different, you know, domestic, you know, domestic things. And uh, the uh, social workers came in and deemed it, you know, not, uh, you know, a healthy environment for children. So they took us out um, when I was in the third or fourth grade. As a result, the game ended up in a foster care home for a while. It wasn't until his freshman year in high school that he was finally released back to his mom. When I was in the third or fourth grade and then I didn't come back, I didn't get released to my mom's um, till I was probably in like first year of high school or something like that. Also, even though he grew up in a crip dominated area, the game eventually became a blood, mostly because of his older brother. His brother was his role model and whatever his brother did, the game wanted to follow. I want to say I became a blood when my brother became a blood because that was who I looked up to and uh, that's who I basically pattern my, my myself and my lifestyle after. Then as he got older, he found himself getting into trouble with the law and went to prison twice as a teenager. He could have easily ended up behind bars a lot more times, but he managed to avoid getting caught in other situations. I've been to, I went to jail twice uh, as a teenager and the other times I think I just got lucky and, and, and slid through. Um, with, without detection. But despite his rough past, the game had the potential to become one of the greatest rappers in hip hop. He had incredible lyrical ability and a strong presence on the mic. However, instead of focusing on growing as an artist, he often got caught up in unnecessary beefs and drama that ended up hurting his career. His tendency to get into feuds or make outlandish claims ended up burning a lot of bridges in the music industry, which has stained his legacy. <laughs> Come back and appear to be unappreciative was incredible to me. Take, for example, recent monumental event in West Coast hip hop. Dr. Dre, the game's former mentor, gathered a star studded lineup including Kendrick Lamar, Schoolboy Q, the entire Black Hippie crew, YG, Mustard, and other West Coast legends for a legendary performance. However, there was one glaring absence the game. For someone who has contributed so much to West Coast hip hop, his absence was not only noticeable but also puzzling. It raises questions about what actions or behaviors led to such a significant snub from an event celebrating the very culture he helped shape. Now, one of the main reasons the game's reputation has taken a hit is his tendency to stretch the truth or exaggerate things. Over time, he's built up a reputation for not always being the most honest, and many fans and industry insiders have labeled him as a bit of a liar. Why, why is it like guaranteed that we're getting live? Yeah. Because it's the game talking. And this is not a shot at him, but he's very extra. Like he puts, he lie. Everybody know he lie. <laughs> A prime example of this is the infamous Instagram post where he shared a photoshopped picture of himself with Tupac Shakur, suggesting that they had met. Fans quickly realized the image was fake, and the backlash was swift. You photoshopped your yourself on someone else and put a picture out with you and Pac. It's Pac. 
but it's not you. People accused the game of trying to deceive his followers. When confronted about it on Vlad TV, he claimed that he never intended to trick anyone and simply wanted to show appreciation for Tupac, whom he considers one of the greatest rappers ever. However, the damage to his credibility was already done. Then there's the ever-changing story of how many times he got shot. It's like he can't keep his story straight, which only adds to the skepticism around him. Over the years, the details of these stories have changed, making it difficult for fans and critics alike to discern the truth. Then there was the incident where he claimed that Kanye West did more for him in a few weeks than Dr. Dre did throughout his career. When you see games say, yo, Dre never did nothing for me. I remember Dre being in a studio and giving you them hits, bro. This statement was not only controversial, but also blatantly false, considering that Dr. Dre is the very reason the game's career took off in the first place. Without Dre's mentorship and influence, would have reached the heights he did. Such statements undermine the contributions of those who played pivotal roles in his success and make him appear ungrateful. You heard him say Kanye did more for, more for me in the last two weeks than Dr. Dre did my entire career, right? I interpret that as him being vulnerable. I interpret that as him lying. In addition to these issues, the game has faced multiple accusations of scamming young, unsigned artists out of thousands of dollars. Promising them placements on a mixtape and promotion for their music, he allegedly took their money without delivering on his promises. So here's how the rapper of the game scammed me into sending him $4,000 for a verse. So I made a beat for him to rap over, and he was gonna record a verse and then send it back to me for $4,000. I thought it was legit as I previously paid him to post one of my new songs in his story, which he did, so I thought it was legit. So after I sent him the $4,000, it took him three months to get back to me, and that's only because I mentioned I had to get a lawyer to get my money back or get the verse. And then there's the game's many beefs in the industry. Let's start with the most notorious one, his feud with 50 Cent. The game situation was disappointing to me. You know, I put so much time and energy into that project, I worked hard on that project, man. I, I I recorded six records on that album. Come back and appear to be unappreciative was incredible to me. Back in 2003, 50 Cent turned the music industry on its head with the release of his iconic debut album, Get Rich or Die Tryin'. He was blowing up as Eminem's protege and solidifying his place in the rap game. Seeing 50's meteoric rise, Dr. Dre, who was always on the lookout for fresh talent, decided it was time to bring up an artist of his own. That same year, Dre discovered a hungry young rapper from Compton who was hustling his mixtapes around town. That rapper was The Game. Game. Dr. Dre immediately saw potential in the game and signed him to Aftermath Records. Over the next few months, Dre worked closely with the game in the studio, helping him find his sound. It wasn't until August 2003, though, that the game and 50 Cent finally linked up. They collaborated on a track called So Hard for the June at Radio 3's Taking It to the Streets mixtape. This track marked the game's official debut on Wax as part of the G Unit family. Despite all the work Dre was putting in, the game wasn't gaining as much traction as they hoped. That's when music mogul Jimmy Iovine came up with a genius plan to boost the game's career. Since 50 Cent was on top of the world at that time, having just dominated the charts, Iovine thought it'd be a great idea to officially bring the game into G-Unit. Dre pitched the idea to 50, and before long, the game was welcomed into the group. And yeah, yo, home. You did you. By July 2004, the game was starting to build momentum. He even got his own June at Radio mixtape titled The Fifth Element, as Dre was doing everything he could to help his West Coast artist catch fire. At the same time, 50 Cent was deep into working on his highly anticipated second album, The St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which was slated for a February 14, 2005 release. Meanwhile, the game was also working hard on his debut album, initially titled NS with an attitude Volume 1, before being changed to the documentary. One day, during a recording session at his home studio, 50 Cent, being the stand-up guy he was, decided to mute his vocals on several tracks that were meant for his own album and handed them over to The Game. This was a major move on 50's part, showing how much he wanted to help The Game's debut album pop off. As 2005 rolled in, things between 50 Cent and The Game started to get shaky. Around this time, The Game began randomly dissing other artists and DJs for no apparent apparent reason, which put him in some hot water. 50 Cent had to step in multiple times to clean up the mess and smooth things over with these artists and industry folks, just to make sure the game's career didn't get derailed before it even really took off. His way of patching it up was, uh, I don't have a problem with Jay-Z or, or 
or or Fat Joe or anybody. And, and, and it was like, <clears throat> I'm busy patching this thing up that you just did. And you come back and you say, you don't have a problem even with the people that I have issues with. Tensions rose further when The Game wanted his debut album, The Documentary, to come out before 50 Cent's second studio album. This led to 50 delaying his album until March, leaving him with a very bad taste in his mouth. On January 28, 2005, Hate It or Love It dropped, and in the music video, 50 Cent actually refused to sit in the front seat of the lowrider with The Game, a sign of the growing tensions between them. The breaking point in their beef came when The Game publicly stated that he had no issues with Nas, Fat Joe, and Jada Kiss, all of whom were 50's enemies at the time. 50 Cent saw this as a major act of disloyalty. During an interview with Ed Lover on Power 105.1, 50 Cent went on a tangent about the game and officially kicked him out of G-Unit live on the air. And he came back recently from overseas and was disrespectful, man. Like the, the way he's like, it's like he's feeling himself, like because of how well his record is selling. That it, it's incredible that he would come back and forget how much work, how much I've done for him. So where does he stand as far as Junior is concerned right Across now? Across the street or around the corner. He's not in my camp. Not at all? No way. Okay. Not, not after being that disrespectful. That same day, 50 Cent sat down with Funk Master Flex at Hot 97, where he once again spoke about the game's disloyalty. But the game was still in New York at the time. Fueled by anger, he gathered a group of gang members and headed to Hot 97. What ensued was a shootout between the game's crew and 50 Cent's entourage, resulting in one of the game's guys getting shot in the leg. During the chaos, 50 Cent made a swift exit through the back door of the building. A couple of days later, in a surprising turn of events, 50 Cent and the game appeared together, making a donation to the Boys Choir of Harlem and the Compton Unified School District Music Program. They even embraced and publicly squashed their beef. However, this truce was short-lived. The peace lasted until Summer Jam in 2005, where the game infamously dissed 50 Cent and the rest of G-Unit. He threw his G-Unit chain into the crowd, declaring that he was officially out of the group. This marked the beginning of the game's anti-G-Unit campaign. Just a few weeks later, the game dropped the You Know What It Is Volume 3 Inches mixtape, which was heavily focused on dissing 50 Cent. This mixtape included the legendary track 300 Bars and Running, a 15 minute onslaught where the game mercilessly tore apart 50 Cent and the rest of G Unit. In response, 50 Cent released the Piggy Bank music video in August, featuring a depiction of the game as Mr. Potato Head. 50 Cent also did an interview with Tim Westwood where he discussed the Hot 97 incident and elaborated on why they were beefing. The game situation was disappointing to me. You know, I put so much time and energy into that project. I worked hard on that project, man. I, I, I recorded six records on that album. Come back and appear to be unappreciative was incredible to me. The streets are saying that the documentary was better than The right. Massacre, which it is, and uh, 50 got jealous and mm. kicked me out of G-Unit, and he thought that he could do what he did to Ja Rule to me. He's a jealous little girl, man. Is that know? what happened? Yeah, he's jealous, and somebody needs to braid his ponytail and put him back in his skirt, because, I mean, he's obviously off his rocker. The game then followed up with the Ghost Unit mixtape, dedicated entirely to dissing G-Unit. 50 Cent finally responded to the game at the end of the song Emotional on the June at Radio 14 Back to Business mixtape, throwing shade towards the game. The two continued to exchange diss tracks and public insults, fueling their ongoing feud. The game's departure from G-Unit put a significant strain on his relationship with Dr. Dre. With millions of dollars at stake, Dre had to make a business decision that essentially sabotaged his work with the game. However, the game proved his resilience with the release of Doctor's Advocate in 2006. Just a year after his debut, he managed to deliver a stellar album without Dre's guiding hand or 50 Cent's contributions, proving to the world that he could stand on his own. Despite the public fallout, it turns out that Dre and the game maintained a healthy relationship behind the scenes. By the time the Red Album was released in 2011, the game revealed that Dre was still giving him vital feedback. If Dre always told me, no matter what happens, no matter what is said in the media, me and you are always going to be the same as we were the last time we had an in-person conversation. For years, the game's loyalty to Dr. Dre remained unshaken. 
Despite no longer being officially signed to him, the game showed an unwavering commitment to Dre. Unlike anything he had exhibited for anyone else in the industry, he admitted there were tense moments between them, but his gratitude always overshadowed the friction. In interviews, he often boasted about his ability to call Dre at a moment's notice. However, if he tried to make that call today, it would likely go unanswered. The game has systematically ruined his ties with Dr. Dre and the entire Aftermath family. His downfall could have been avoided if he hadn't been so controlled by emotion in an industry that demands strategy and careful thought. When Dre released the Compton LP and the game appeared on only one track, some fans found it odd. However, the situation became more glaring when Dre was set to oversee the Super Bowl halftime show in 2022. It was expected that Dre would perform a career-spanning set featuring many artists he had mentored. On the big night, he brought out Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Anderson Pac, Kendrick Lamar, and 50 Cent. Meanwhile, the game was left on the sidelines, watching from his own city. Initially, the game kept things civil and acted unbothered by the snub. However, knowing his mindset, it seemed only a matter of time before his true feelings spilled out. Eventually, he admitted that it did get to him. It just wouldn't have happened. LA, 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 all around the Super Bowl, and I don't get the call. This admission flipped a switch, opening the floodgates for the game to cross a line he had never crossed before discrediting Dr. Dre, the rapper who had once penned a heartfelt tribute to Dre on his second album, now downplayed Dre's impact on his career and life as if it were insignificant. I've never had a song with Dre on it and Dre been in my video. Snoop has a ton. M has a ton. I don't have none. Soon, he was claiming that Kanye West, a man he had previously beefed with over explicit lyrics about Kanye's then-wife Kim Kardashian, had done more for his career than Dre ever did. The world collectively rolled its eyes at this comment, and those who witnessed the game's early days with Aftermath were quick to call him out. Yo, Dre never did nothing for me. I remember Dre being in the studio and giving you them hits, bro. By publicly disparaging the man who had given him a major break, the game effectively burned his most valued bridge in hip-hop. He has since tried to walk back his comments, attempting to save face, but the damage was done. Basically, I was uh, a little inebriated, and uh, I said some things that I, that I meant. I'm not going to take it back. I ain't yeah. no sucker. Touch any part of anything that you're doing in life is such a blessing that um, I shall not um, ever on that again. In the aftermath of the Super Bowl snub, the game internalized a lot of animosity towards Dre. He even used this bitterness to justify some of his actions, like claiming that his diss towards Eminem was just another way to get back at Dre. Throwing shots at Eminem and beef with Eminem, it was just me being upset with Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre can't out-rap me, so I just went at him, just because that's just how I get sometimes. If this were an isolated incident, perhaps Dre could have let it go but it was part of a larger pattern of behavior that ultimately destroyed Dre's respect for the game. The game's attempts to undermine Kendrick Lamar were another factor in Dre's distancing. Saluted by Kendrick and Black Boy Fly, as a rapper he looked up to, the game was present when the torch was passed to Kendrick by Snoop Dogg. Over the years, Kendrick collaborated with the game on several tracks, and it seemed like they were on good terms. However, at every turn, the game appeared to downplay Kendrick's skills, whether out of competitiveness or jealousy. Can't nobody account the out rap game. Kendrick, my Kendrick do it. I love that death. I flew past Kendrick when I was on foot in a Range Rover and showed him how to do it. Don't play with game name. Hardest in Compton, rapping lyricist me. Once again, the game let alcohol influence his actions, fostering potential problems with another of Dre's protégés. This, along with his refusal to stand by the West Coast during Kendrick's beef with Drake, contributed to Dre's gradual distancing. While Dre provided the intro to Not Like Us, the game took Drake's side and wasn't present at Kendrick's pop-up show that symbolized West Coast unity. This absence raised questions and added to the reasons why Dre no longer respects him. Despite the game's attempts to control his narrative, it's easy to see why Dre has distanced himself. The game has dissed nearly every major rapper associated with Aftermath, and his unpredictable nature has proven hazardous. His disloyalty and ungratefulness have made it clear to Dre that maintaining ties with the game is more trouble than it's worth. The game didn't stop there. 
He also went on to have beef with other big names in hip-hop, including none other than Jay-Z. It seemed like no one was off-limits when it came to the game's long list of feuds. He went after artists left and right, which only added to his reputation for stirring up drama, and the more he clashed with others, the more his legacy became tainted by the drama. Fans and critics alike began saying that if the game continued down this path, the biggest thing he might end up being known for is having the biggest downfall in hip-hop history.